Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome to Educating Animal Trivia. Today our trivia theme is reptiles and as always we'll have 10 questions that are all either multiple choice or true or false. After each question I'll pause for a couple seconds so you guys can pause the video and discuss as a group what you think the correct answer is and then we'll talk about it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, you guys, so this critter on the screen here should give you a pretty good idea of some of the animals that we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started with number one. There are four groups of reptiles. Which of these is not one of those groups? A, lizards. B, crocodiles and alligators. C, snakes. Or D, frogs. Go ahead and pause the video here so you guys can discuss and figure out which you think is not one of the major groups of reptiles. Okay, are you ready? It is D. Frogs are not a major group of reptile. While frogs do have quite a bit in common with reptiles like snakes and lizards, they are amphibians, which are quite different than reptiles. And we're going to talk more about that as we move on today. All right, let's keep plugging right away with number two. There are many venomous snakes, but there are only three venomous lizards. Is this true or false? Okay, so let's discuss for a second. There are many venomous snakes. This part is definitely true. We've got rattlesnakes, which are a type of viper, and cobras and sea snakes, which are all venomous. And there are only three venomous lizards. So this is true of all the lizard species in the whole world. There are only three of them that are venomous. Now, let's see which three. We have the Komodo dragon, who happens to be not only a venomous lizard, but the largest lizard in the whole world. They can weigh well over 150 pounds, and they have a venomous bite as does the Gila monster that is native to the southwestern United States over in Arizona and Mexico. These guys are very well adapted for the desert, just like a camel has those big humps on their back that they use to store fat for times of the year where there's not very much food or water. The Gila monster does the same thing with its tail. It can store fat inside of its tail. So who knew a camel and a lizard had so much in common. And our last venomous lizard is the Mexican beaded lizard, which you guys might be able to tell looks quite similar to the Gila monster. If we look at the scales of the Mexican beaded lizard, and then that at the Gila monster, we can see they both have those very bumpy textures all across their skin. Okay, so lots of venomous snakes, but only three venomous lizards. Let's keep moving on to number three. Scales are made out of a substance called what? Are they made out of A, cartilage, B, skin, C, keratin, or D, bone. Go ahead, take a minute to discuss. Okay, let's see if you got it right. It is C, keratin. Now, if you are not familiar with keratin, you are about to be. Keratin is the substance that makes up a reptile scale. So of course, snakes have scales and those scales are made of keratin. But reptiles are not the only ones with keratin. Humans and other mammals are covered in hair or fur, which is also made of keratin. 
So are our fingernails are made of keratin. If we jump over to birds, most birds have feathers that are made out of keratin, but it doesn't stop there. The rhinoceros hornbill on the left and other hornbill species have these big things called casts on their heads that scientists think are used to make them louder to help resonate their sound. Those are made out of keratin, as is a rhinoceros's horn is also made out of keratin. If we go back to our list of options here, cartilage is the stuff that makes up our nose and our ears. That's kind of squishy. Of course, we know what skin is, and bone is the thing that makes up our skeleton and the skeleton of most animals. Okay, let's keep plugging along. Number four. We're going to stick with reptile scales for a minute. Reptiles have scales for many reasons. Which of these is not a way that reptiles use scales? A, for flying. B, for camouflage. C, for protection. Or D, for movement, to help them move. Take a minute to discuss. Okay, so reptiles have scales for lots of reasons. Depending on the type of reptile, they might use their scales for a whole bunch of different things. One thing that reptiles do not use their scales for is a flying. There are no reptiles that can fly. Now, hang on to this thought for just a second. Let's talk about these other three for a moment. If we look at B, camouflage, Many reptiles use the colors or the patterns of their scales to help them blend in. Many rattlesnakes in the desert tend to be the same color or the same pattern as the rocks and dirt around them. Of course, the reptile that comes to mind right away for a reptile who uses scales for protection is a tortoise or a turtle. Of course, they have these big hard shells that they use to help them avoid predators and to stay alive. And then that last one on the list was movement. Now, of course, reptiles have scales that allow them to move, but most snakes have scales that help them to move. Most snakes on their bellies have really long, skinny scales, which is different than the scales on their back. Look at how small and kind of diamond shaped these scales are. Having these long, flat scales on their belly kind of works like like plates. So when they're moving across the ground and they're going over rocks or twigs, it makes it easier for them to kind of slither along all those rough surfaces. Now, we said no reptiles use their scales for flying. However, some do use their scales for gliding. So some snakes actually, who tend to live way up in the trees of forests, they can make their bodies super flat and they will actually jump from tree to tree and they'll kind of use their wide flat bodies like a parachute. This is gliding, not flying. So I stand by, there are no reptiles that can fly. Okay, number five, many reptiles sleep for the whole winter in a behavior known as what? A, brachiation, B, napping, C, brumation, or D, arboreal. Take a minute to discuss. Okay, so we know that there are mammals that do this, right? And we call that hibernation. But when it's a cold-blooded animal, like a reptile or an amphibian, we give it an extra special name because we love to give things fancy names in science. We call it sea brumation. And brumation is something that tortoises and snakes and lizards and even alligators and crocodiles will do during the cold winter when their bodies have a hard time generating heat. So typically when a reptile is cold, they have to go lay out in the sun to warm themselves up. 
In the winter, that might not be as easy to do. So most reptiles who live in places where it's really cold in the winter will actually go underground into a burrow and they'll spend the whole winter there. And instead of calling it hibernation, we call it brumation. Now let's talk really quick about the rest of these words. A, brachiation, that is what we call it when animals swing from tree to tree. So when we're talking about an orangutan or a spider monkey, they use brachiation to move through the forest. Of course, we all know what napping is. I definitely love a good nap. And D, arboreal. Arboreal means an animal who lives up in the trees. So those orangutans we just talked about are arboreal. They spend almost their whole lives in the trees. Okay, moving on. Number six, you can tell an alligator and a crocodile apart by A, where they live, B, the shape of their snout, C, their teeth, or D, all of the above. Go ahead and discuss. Okay, so how can you tell an alligator and a crocodile apart? Well, there are many ways. The answer is D, all of the above. Where they live, typically alligators live in freshwater. We find them in lakes and ponds and streams, whereas some crocodiles tend to live more in salt water. The shape of their snout and their teeth. Let's talk about their teeth first. Crocodiles, we joke, we say they have a toothy smile. When they close their mouth, we usually can see their top teeth and their bottom teeth. Whereas alligators, when they close their mouth, their bottom teeth get hidden behind their top teeth. The shape of their snout for a crocodile, their snout is a V-shaped. It kind of comes to a more narrow point. An alligator has more of a U-shaped snout. It's quite round compared to that of a crocodile. So whether we're looking at saltwater or freshwater, whether we can see all the teeth or just the top teeth and the shape of their snout can tell us if what we're looking at is a crocodile or an alligator. All right, I hope you guys are doing all right. Let's keep plugging along with number seven. Whether a sea turtle's offspring are males or females depends on what? A, the size of the egg. B, the weight of the egg. C, the tide of the ocean. Or D, the temperature of the nest. Go ahead and take a minute. Okay, so this is actually something that's fairly common among some reptiles, including tortoises and alligators and sea turtles, that whether their offspring are males or females depends on D, the temperature of a nest. For sea turtles, if the nest is unusually warm, the offspring will be mostly females, but if the nest is a little bit chilly, the offspring will be mostly males. Now this is opposite for some of the other types of reptiles whose offspring depend on the temperature of the nest. But for sea turtles, the cooler the nest, the more males, the warmer the nest, the more females. Okay, number eight. Snakes have a very special ability to blank with their tongues. Can they A, smell with their tongue, B, hear with their tongue, C, echolocate with their tongue, or D, see with their tongue? What special thing can a snake use its tongue for? Okay, so here in this picture, we have an invasive brown tree snake. This snake lives on the island Guam, where it is not supposed to be found. It was introduced there, and it is eating all of the native birds. So it's becoming quite a big problem. 
And the way that they are able to find a lot of their prey, including those birds, is that extra special smelling ability that they have with their tongues. Now, they do have a nose, right? We can see in this picture, this little opening here, this little hole, that is their nose. But they have a better sense of smell with their tongue. When they flick out their tongue, they pick up all sorts of scent particles, and then they flick them up into the top of their mouth, where they have a very special organ called the Jacobson organ that allows them to figure out what all those smells are. And because their tongue comes to two points instead of coming to one point like ours does, they're actually able to smell what direction that smell was coming from too. So snakes have this extra special smelling abilities and so do some lizards as well. All right, two more, here we go. Number nine, snakes have wide scales on their belly to help them move across the ground in many different habitats. We already talked about that. Which type of snake below does not have wide belly scales? A, cobras, B, sea snakes, C, rattlesnakes, or D, corn snakes? Take a moment to discuss. Okay, so we said that snakes have those large belly scales to help them move across the ground. And there is only one type of snake that spends its entire life in the ocean. They never come up onto land. And that is a sea snake. So they don't need wide belly scales because they're never going to be slithering across rocks and twigs like snakes that live on land. Now, sea snakes are a very special snake. They are still a reptile, even though they swim around like an eel. Unlike an eel who has gills, the sea snake does not and still has to come up to the surface to get a breath of air or to warm up their bodies if they spend too long in deeper water where it's cold. There are some snakes that live in the ocean that do come up onto land, but a true sea snake, which there are more than 70 species, never comes up onto land. Okay, you guys, all right, our last question. Let's do it. Number 10, all reptiles lay eggs. True or false? Okay, so this agama lizard from Africa that we see here in the photo is a rule follower. Like most reptiles, they do lay eggs. However, not all reptiles lay eggs. In fact, about 20% of reptiles have live babies instead of laying eggs. Like a rattlesnake has live babies. So do many species of skinks, including the blue tongue skink does not lay eggs. They have live babies that look like tiny versions of the adults. They're very cute. And many types of anacondas and boas also have live babies. So even though we learn mammals have live birth, birds lay eggs, reptiles lay eggs, that is true for most reptiles, but not all. What a fun trivia session learning all about those scaly creatures. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And if you want to do trivia live with me or one of our other zoologists, be sure to check the description below and we'll see you guys soon.